evening. And, um, you know, Dave, you've talked, you talked about the, uh, the linked elevated radio uh, quite a bit in your, you know, for the last hour, you know, uh, and in, with some of the other questions and also with your, with your recent trip here. And we did that video, you know, just not so long, not too long ago. And that generated a lot of comments. What did you say? Something like 260 comments that you, you, yeah. you counted. <laughs> you, yeah. you went, through, you went yeah. through them all. And uh, I know I, I, I kind of pull, I kind of, um, poured through them again this morning because, and I wanted to pull out a few uh, very common questions that people had on using the linked elevated uh, ground radio system or counterpo counterpoise radio system for their, you know, for the for their vertical antennas. And uh, basically, it's um, we'll start out with this one. Um, uh, Tracy Tracy R. Reed asks. Why do elevated radials have to be tuned, whereas radials on the ground do not? And I think this is an important distinction we need to make. You know, why? What's the difference between a ground radial and an elevated radial? And um, I guess I'll, <laughs> I'll 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 kick this for. Well, I mean, we're not. This is this is this is like a this is like a rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah. But the, basically. You know, if if we lay our radials on the ground, um, the the radial the 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 radio the radio or counterpoint or ground network system for your antenna, you know, once that once that wire is laying on the ground, it is going to be um, it's going to be detuned by the ground. So its length doesn't really make a whole lot of difference in 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 the loosely speaking. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we can the radials can be of an indeterminate length if they're laying on the ground. But you got uh, when you start laying your radials on the ground, you have ground losses. The the ground, you know, good conductivity, poor conductivity, it's going to absorb that RF energy because because the ground system is half your antenna. It it absorbs a lot of that energy and you lose it through the ground network. So in order to compensate for that. You need to lay lots of radials out um, to lower the average loss per radial, and that just increases your um, the, the the efficiency of your ground network. Now, if we elevate the radial, we've decoupled it from the ground, and mm -hmm. uh, what what happens there is well, our efficiency increases, but also now our radial instead of acting as a counterpoise or as a network ground system, now it's acting as part of the, the antenna. It's actually radiating, it's doing its job. And in order, and, and when it's elevated to do its job, it needs to be resonant. Just like our vertical antenna is, our, ra our elevated radial needs to be resonant. So the good, the bad thing is, is that we've got to cut or tune that radial so that it is at the resonant frequency of our antenna but the good thing is, is that because it's a much more efficient, we can get by with just one. So, yeah, yeah, it, it, it's it almost becomes a uh, a dipole. Yeah, it's sort of like an L-shaped dipole, and yep. and so what what you've got is a quarter wave vertical and a quarter wave horizontal, or at least semi-horizontal, and it's at a distance above the ground sufficient that it's not capacitively coupling to Correct. the ground. And and I think I think the, the whole concept of the ground being your counterpoise is was is out of convenience. Okay. So so if you if you've got an 80 meter antenna or a 40 meter antenna, the radials become unmanageable. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know, 33, 66 feet, or the, like the AM broadcast stations, like they, they wouldn't be practical to spread radials in every direction at above ground. Absolutely. And so, and so they utilized ground as the the other half of the antenna. I think out of mostly out of convenience. Mm -hmm. and, and and of course, it's depending on the ground conductivity, the the efficiency and the losses can can start to pile up yeah and so and so what we what we've 
documented is that by using wires in this case uh, in this case a single radial we are able to eliminate or mostly eliminate the ground from the whole equation so it yep. doesn't matter if you're three feet off the ground or 30 feet off the ground the, the ground has basically been decoupled or removed from from the antenna yes and, yes but but by doing that in order to in order to have a 50 ohm uh, feed point, we need to tune both the vertical element and the horizontal element, and that's why the radial length is critical, and and that's why it becomes problematic when you're trying to operate on multiple bands. You mm -hmm. have to be able to adjust both the height and the length of your of your radials, both which, both sides of the antenna system. Yeah. And that's why the concept of of a link or some way of easily adjusting and modifying the length of both the vertical and the horizontal element yeah. the, it kind of becomes a necessity as a, as an amateur radio operator. Yep. yep, exactly, exactly. So, yeah, and that's what we find. So, um, and... Um, what uh, Brian Traska, 8173, said, yeah, um, great demonstration using one radio. Does that make it somewhat directional? Where two radios, 180 degrees apart, would that make it omnidirectional? Yeah, absolutely. You, you're right on. And, mm -hmm. and, in, and if you do the, I'm not into the antenna modeling, for, but guys who do that say that the uh, the efficiency goes up, of course, with with more radials. So yeah. one is the absolute minimum. Yeah, that that's bare minimum. Okay, and in fact, if you use one radial, it does have forward directivity in the direction of that radial. So mm -hmm. that, that's that's a given, and we you know we covered that in the video really well. I think yep. if you add a second radial at 180 degrees away, that will in fact get rid of the directivity and make it basically omnidirectional. It yeah, will also in, it'll it'll also increase the efficiency a little bit. And in fact they say that that a third and a fourth radial is will also have a, you know positive impact. But it in the case of us Porta guys, it becomes uh, a, a question of how much effort <laughs> do you want to put into it in order to, you know, pretty soon the, the benefits don't justify the effort. And, and yeah, there's a lot of, yeah, yeah the, you it, you definitely have diminishing returns in, right. in um, um, sat, you know, um, effort versus satisfaction when it comes to adding more radials. And I think two is usually about the limit. And um, we had um, Greg, uh, KJ6ER, um, he's experimented extensively with elevated radials, and he's created a an antenna system he calls the Poda Performer, which yep. does it does quite you know it, you know literally you know the same thing we were doing except he didn't he you had the link concept and he he wasn't linking his he was using a separate piece of wire for each band, yep. um, but he would take two radials in a ninety degree ang angle from each other. Yep. Yeah, he actually he actually came up with sixty degrees as being the, what, what yeah. he found to be the most ideal for generating uh, maximum efficiency and forward gain in a portable setup. Even mm -hmm. he was at a sixty degree difference between the two radials. Yep. And, but his his results, his numbers, his terms of dB gain and and whatnot were very very similar to to what we. We did so he got yeah. about it. he he found with two radials he extensively tested this both um on um, um computer modeling and real world tests and he found that with two radials 60 degrees apart he got a one full s unit or six db of gain so yeah. it may it yeah. makes a difference oh um, absolutely and when you're in alaska and all of your contacts are south you know that that you're wasting energy sending it to the North Pole, you know. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm unless, sure, unless you're going, unless you're going over, you know, to to Russia or something like that. <laughs> Chris Rain seventy nine sixty four says, if I were to use the seventeen foot whip with the sporty forty coil, 
uh, turn it that in, in essence turning his vertical into a 40 meter antenna would a 32 foot radio work or does it only work with just the whip and they, the answer to that would be yes it would work um, because Absolutely. your vertical element that's that's resonant on 40 meters even though you're using the coil the loading coil to to electrically match you know make that match um, if you're going to elevate the radial the radial is going to have to be tuned for that frequency. So 40 right. meters, 32, 33 feet. Absolutely. Yeah. Unless he, unless he puts an identical coil in the radial, which, which he could do. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it, uh, you know, the radial could be shortened by putting an inductor in there too. But uh, yeah, but otherwise, yeah, he'd have to, to you know, tune it and uh, then tune the yeah, for for sure. Yep, absolutely. And then finally, what gauge wire did you use for your radials? That a lot of people ask that about wire gauge. Yeah. So. Uh, to be honest, it makes no difference at all. Uh, mm -hmm. The the main thing from a portable standpoint isn't the size as far as carrying uh, con, you know conducting electricity because it's very very low amperage. So that's not the issue. The real issue is being able to support the wire okay mm -hmm. because, you're, because this is running a horizontal so you got gravity working against you and so yep. when that wire stretches out 17 feet it's going to want to sag and and the, the heavier the wire is of course the more problems you got with trying to support that that horizontal radial so so in my case i think i think i'd like 18 gauge stranded wire i certainly wouldn't use anything heavier than that I would, I would, yeah, I would, you know, if I was, if I'm building one, I would probably be in that 18 to 22 gauge ballpark. Um, yeah. Those are, those are wires that are thick enough that you can actually work with them. Um, you know, you get, you get down to 24, 26 gauge and that's, that's a little bit of a pain in the butt. So. Yeah. But, and, 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 and remember you, you don't need physical strength either because you're not, you're not, you're not stretching these, no, you know, to great heights or or between high tension points or anything like that. I mean, this thing's yep. just going to support its, itself. Now, yeah. when, if with a seventeen foot wire, I found that I can stretch that without any supports other than at the the antenna and at the base at at the end. If you were going to use this thing on forty meters, now you got a thirty three foot wire. I think you'd have to, you know, somehow add a couple of more supports somewhere along the line because you don't want that wire to sag all the way down to the ground. No. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to, yeah, that's, that's, that is a long stretch for that wire. So got a couple things in the chat here. KH six WI. Um, Kevin asks a six DB gain, or excuse me, Kevin Eric uh, says a six DB gain on a vertical. The three element Yagi has seven point one DB. So yeah, you can definitely get some um, low effort, high return kind of signals uh, out of the um, uh, Greg's uh, Poda Performer uh, antenna system. Um, yeah. I should find the. He's got he's got all of his plans on. Facebook and let me see if I can. I got the link saved here. I'm just gonna grab it quick. Um, it's in the. He's got it. Otherwise, if you if you're not on on the the book of face, you can. Yeah, go to just, go to his. If just, go to, yeah, if you just Google KJ6ER. KJ6ER, go to his QRZ page, and he yep. tells you how you can get the information on how to how to build that um, uh, the Poda Performer antenna. Uh, let's see, Don Z, uh, does the direction of the radio also help reduce noise of the opposite direction, thus improving signal to noise ratio? Yes, and I think I think yeah, the short that would be yes. That, yeah, that in fact is uh, what we're talking about here. It's the front to back ratio. So, so the forward gain, uh, the forward gain that I experienced wasn't quite six dB. The the front to back ratio is more than six dB. Mm -hmm. But the reason that when we say six dB, I, I, in our experiment or in my experiments with the with the actual testing, 
I'm pulling the numbers out of my head now, but I think the the gain above uh, conventional radials or magic carpet was about four point some dB. So it wasn't fully six. But with a single radial, the difference between the forward and the backward, not only transmission strength, but reception uh, mm -hmm. sensitivity was in fact about six and a half dB. So yeah, yeah. It, it quiets down the backside, uh, just uh, just like it's somewhat attenuating your yep. your radiation in that direction. Yes, and that makes a, that makes a big difference. And it made uh, a huge, huge difference in Alaska. Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Forty five asks, would the elevated radio work with the Poseidon and Ribikov style antenna? Uh, to just a little bit of background, the Ribikov is a um, it's a twenty five foot vertical radiator with a four to one um, transformer at its base and then four 17 foot uh, ground radials. And I don't, it's because it's an, it's a not, the Ribikov is a non-resonant antenna. It'll work with 10 through 80 meters on a tuner, but it has its highest because of the way in which, and when you get to 12, you know, 15, 12 and 10 meters, how the lobes start to form, the it it really it really puts out a big signal on on those higher bands. I don't know if, if elevating the radials would work on that just by virtue of it being a non-resonant antenna. If if that would, I got a feeling that you know once you once you lift those radials, then now now, you, now you're going to want something that might be more res you know resonant on that band or something like that. So. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, but, but but if you decouple it, so you're not you're not relying on the ground, mm -hmm. the conductivity of the ground to be the second half of your antenna, it probably it probably would be uh, more efficient. I don't know what you know if it would be to the extent that the, the six dB. I don't know, but yeah, but, uh, yeah, yeah. I I, I don't have to try. I don't, yeah, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Give it a shot. See what happens. KB9 VBR antennas are simple, effective, and affordable VHF and UHF antennas for amateur radio, MERS, public safety, and GMRS. Made in the USA with quality parts. Get yours online at jpole-antenna.com.